For decades, he was touted as the best of the Bonds, but there's more to Sean Connery's life than his days as a secret agent. On October 31, 2020, the actor died in his sleep in the Bahamas following a long illness. This is the story of his life beyond Bond. Born to a working-class family in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1930, Thomas Sean Connery had a childhood that belied the glamorous life for which he was eventually destined, including leaving school at the age of nine to begin working to help his family get by. I used to walk to work in the dark. My mother went to work at the same time, and then I used to go straight from there at six in the morning and go straight to school. Like many young people, Connery did not immediately gravitate to what would become his very successful career. Instead, he joined the Royal Navy at the age of 16, about a year after World War II ended. He spent not quite three years in the Navy, earning the title of able seaman assigned to the HMS Formidable. However, he was discharged at the age of 19 because of duodenal ulcers, an affliction which ran in his family. Both before and after his stint in the Navy, Connery took on many odd jobs, such as delivering milk, bricklaying, lifeguarding, and even coffin polishing. In his spare time, Connery took up bodybuilding, competing in the 1953 Mr. Universe competition. Though he eventually drifted away from bodybuilding, he used his physique as an artist model at the Edinburgh College of Art. Connery was repeatedly praised as one of the sexiest men alive, so it stands to reason that he spent a good deal of his youth engaged in activities that centered on his body and his beauty. Well, I mean, what are you supposed to reply to that? Sean Connery was nothing if not a very dedicated hard worker. It seems he never rested on his laurels, even if it did take him some jumping around from job to job before he committed to acting. He spent about eight years modeling and taking on bit parts and chorus parts in stage plays, TV, and film before he got a foothold in starring roles. His first major part on the silver screen was opposite Lana Turner in the 1958 film Another Time, Another Place. Four years later, he would assume the role that went on to make him world famous, starring in the original James Bond movie Dr. No. It is startling in retrospect that a man from such humble beginnings became nearly synonymous with the sexy, sophisticated, international man of mystery. It lends credence to the idea that anyone really can become anything if they put in the effort, and if they're very, very lucky. Once Connery became Bond, it was all uphill for his career. Many actors are the progeny of other actors, and Connery passed his acting genes down to his son from his first marriage, Jason Connery. Though not as famous as his father was, Jason has enjoyed a steady, stable career since appearing at the age of 20 in The Lords of Discipline in 1983. Aside from acting, he has also helmed film projects as director, starting with the film Pandemic in 2008. In a funny link to his dad, Jason played a film version of Bond author Ian Fleming in the TV drama Spymaker The Secret Life of Ian Fleming. Though Connery was known around the world as Sir Sean Connery for the last 20 years of his life, it was a bumpy road to his eventual knighting in 2000. It was widely rumored that he was twice denied knighthood by Donald Dewar, former Scottish Labour Party politician because of his political views. Connery is a member of the Scottish National Party, a central-left party which favors Scottish independence from the United Kingdom. Needless to say, Scottish independence is a bit of a snub to the good old Queen of England, so it's fair to see that Britain may not want to extend the honor of knighthood to a man so vocally opposed to its monarchy. Incidentally, Dewar passed away on October 2000, just a few months after Connery received his knighthood. Despite Connery's dedication to the Scottish National Party, he seemed to have been very proud of his knighthood. He was credited as Sir Sean Connery in more recent roles. Though Connery's rise from rags to riches makes for an incredible story, there are a few shadier aspects of his life and career, one of those being his allegedly fraught relationship with taxes. Connery was accused of being a tax exile, living away from Scotland to avoid paying income taxes. He released his tax information in 2003 to dispel these rumors, though there are claims that he would have paid more if he had lived in the country at the time. He again came under fire for alleged property tax fraud regarding a villa he and his wife owned in Marbella, Spain. Though Connery was acquitted, his wife Micheline Rockbrun was investigated. Initially, the fraud has been referred to as Operation Goldfinger, a callback to one of Connery's Bond films. I think you've made your point, Goldfinger. Thank you for the demonstration. Though he reached the end of his life while living in the Bahamas, Connery is most inextricably linked with Scotland, a place he maintained he would only move back to if and when it gained independence from Britain. But there is another land that has chosen to honor the famous Scot, Estonia. More specifically, the Scottish club of Tallinn, Estonia funded a bronze bust of the actor through private donations. The Scottish club, begun as a society to sample whiskey, is comprised of Estonians enamored with Scottish culture, as well as a handful of Scottish expatriates. Connery is not the first influential Scot the club is honored with a statue. His bust joins that of Robert Burns, the 18th century poet perhaps best known for penning Auld Lang Syne and often recognized as Scotland's national poet. 
Talon might seem like a strange location for a society honoring Scottish legends, but it's clear that the members, who raised about $14,000 to have the statue made, are dedicated to their cause. Just about every celebrity has a pet cause or area of activism that they regularly support. For Connery, his own upbringing has prompted an interest in education. He helped co-found the Scottish International Education Trust in 1971 with his friend Sir Jackie Stewart to financially support promising Scots achieve a better education. In fact, Connery donated his entire salary from his work on the Bond film Diamonds Are Forever to the Trust, a sum which his website claims was well over $1 million. His philanthropy doesn't stop there, but his site declines to list the apparently myriad charities and worthy causes the star has supported. Instead, it prompts visitors to consider helping others as he has, and lists his main areas of interest – education, culture, and Scotland. It seems he doesn't take his own big break for granted, acknowledging that the help he received as a young man made an immeasurable difference. Sean Connery is a sex symbol, the kind of man many wouldn't be surprised to learn has a long list of ex-wives and jilted lovers. In fact, he only has one ex-wife, Dion Salento, and has been married to his second wife, Micheline Rockbrune, since 1975. Brock Brune is an accomplished painter who favors portraiture and bright hues, her gallery available to view on her husband's website. Her long marriage to Connery, though it seemed amicable enough, even despite her taking the fall in their tax fraud scandal, hasn't always been the perfect pairing, however. The man best known for portraying the chauvinistic Bond has had some misogyny problems of his own, including a very public romantic affair with pop star Lindsay DePaul, a woman 18 years his junior. Still, Brock Brune remained with Connery until the end of his life. Perhaps the most distinctive thing about Connery for many filmgoers is his voice, that deep, rolling Scottish brogue. Despite this, he hasn't done a wealth of voice work, limiting such roles to a few special projects. One of those projects was the 2005 video game From Russia With Love, for which he reprised his role as James Bond. Long before that, he played Draco, the computer-generated dragon in Dragonheart. The last dragon on Earth, Draco teams up with an erstwhile dragon hunter, a monk, and a young woman on a quest to save England from a tyrannical king. It's a fun, sentimental fantasy adventure, and Connery's Draco holds up surprisingly well. The less said about the franchise that followed, the better. As recently as 2012, Connery came out of retirement to play the title role in the film Sir Billy, an animated film about a Scottish veterinarian that Connery produced. His tone and delivery also make him a natural choice for a narrator, a role he's filled only once for a TV documentary. Other than that, the best way to hear the man is to watch him in the flesh in one of the many, many films he left behind as his legacy.